it was nice. It was. It's nice. It's uh, useful because, um, as we say, you need to uh, give some some proof to people, especially here in Italy, because you know, in Italy, it's not so um, known actually. Uh, solution for this is it's it's become it's becoming known. Uh, last year we had the um, first ABTH conference. And um, we have some books, um, most of them out of print, but I, uh, my best hopes are that <laughs> um, also with this kind of interviews, uh, it becomes more and more known. And about that, uh, what solution focused brief therapy research says in general, let's say to our colleagues, what say in general? and especially today, uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. What do we know? What do we know? We know. The, the, uh, the, well, we know that there are very many studies now of solution-focused therapy around the world. There are studies in 12 languages. So it looks as if solution-focused works in different culture you can go to a different place. You have to change some questions. If you are working in China, you have to ask, what does your father think? Because father is very important. Yeah, so even if they don't say about father, you have to ask about father. Whereas in European countries, probably not so important. Individuals in the family are important, but not specifically father. So, solution focused seems to work in a number of different settings a number of different cultures and to be equally successful the results suggest more or less equivalent outcomes for different countries uh, which is important and the main difficulty for solution focused research is because we don't like to use diagnosis terms we don't like to say depression, anxiety. Uh, and so in, when they do politically significant studies, they use diagnosis as part of the construction of the study. And that means they often have no solution-focused information. The government organization in Britain, they provide guidelines for treatment they begin by doing a literature search on diagnostic term so therefore they never hear of solution focused because there are almost no studies which include solution focused and depression and anxiety we just describe what people want and their goals so it becomes invisible because they don't look in the right place to find which is very annoying. And I have colleagues who have worked on the big committees and what they say is ignored because they say it's not in the literature. That's why EVTA asked that we begin to collect studies and to make the information public. Well, they asked me to begin, but that was easy because there were only eight studies at that time. So it's very easy. I can say, oh yes, I can do this. You didn't imagine the, the curve, how to yeah. the future. <laughs> Your preferred the future was probably different at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but of course, it was lovely to work with other people from other countries. But uh, yeah, so they began with eight in 1995. And now there are two years ago when I finished doing this job, there were 325 studies. So much bigger numbers. Probably you have looked at my website, the list is there for up to 2017. But it's too big now for one person, especially one person with no job, is too big to do the studies. There are 1200 papers every year about solution focused work. It takes a long time to examine the studies and to decide if they are good quality or not. EBTA say somebody else will take over, but 
nobody has yet begun to do that. And the Americans, they make a list from Google of the names of the studies, but they provide no information about the content of the study. They do not describe what the study looks at. Not very easy. You have to begin from the beginning again to find out if a study is useful. Okay. I also saw that there are uh, how many? Uh, 11 uh, meta analysis? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Uh, meta analysis 10. There were 10 as of last two years ago. There may, I think there will be more now, although I haven't seen any, to be fair. Nobody has mentioned any, but probably there are others. There are, for example, there is um, Korea, South Korea, its own solution focused organization. It has its own journal, it has its own committee. Probably they know many things that we do not know. They, they have their own operation to do it, their own system. Help me to understand two things, Halas Day. Um, you say something that is very interesting to me. Um, solution focus therapy comes from a, a post-structuralist view, you know? And what does it mean? It means many things. And one of these things is, as you say, that we don't use um, traditional diagnostical systems. Yeah. Um, which means that we don't use uh, one kind of diagnosis, actually, because often we talk about diagnosis if uh, it, it is one kind of, but that's not. The, the kind of diagnosis we use is mostly the um, nosographical um, diagnosis, DSM. And, uh, but sometimes I think uh, And, and sorry, and, and this is um, a problem for many brief therapy, not only solution-focused therapy, also strategic therapy, for example. Um, mm. But sometimes I think um, um, it's a problem because we can't uh, use those kind of system, which is the um, system that the most part of the international community use for uh, proof that uh, an approach is effective. But it's, it's, it's hard to say. Um, couldn't be just easy to do something like, to say something like, I do the solution-focused therapy, but I use um, those kind of diagnostical instruments, uh, back depression inventory, Um, symptom checklist, uh, 90, uh, something like that, uh, continuing to use my approach, solution focus, but evaluating it with those kind of um, instruments. It's, it's, it, it seems easy to me, but maybe I'm, I'm missing something. The, we thought about that in EBTA, in about 1997-1999 we thought if we design a research protocol then we can pass it on to many people we have many friends we know many people who do solution focused uh, we can collect big numbers of cases very quickly with a standard template a standard formula to do the research uh, so we spent a long time preparing a suitable thing which we could all agree on as solution focused. Uh, but we couldn't persuade anybody to use it. Everybody, oh, I am too busy. He will do it. And nobody did it. I did five cases and uh, the group in London did four cases and nobody else did any. So we don't have enough numbers to... So we, the, the design is still there. But uh, we don't, nobody has the interest to follow a standard pattern invented by somebody else, I think. So it would be very good if that kind of study could be done, which would provide big enough numbers. And we had used standard instruments so that people would, so that the 
results would agree with each other. Not our own ideas, but actual standard tests like the um, global assessment of functioning, you know, or, or the YOQ, things that are already recognized instruments. <laughs>